This is New Orleans, the murder capital of America. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans? It's like we walking on eggshells. It's that freaking scary. I mean, the f good always. Been shot eight times? Twice in both of my arm, twice in both of my leg, one in my chest, you know what I mean? Take the move. Oh, New Orleans now holds the record as the murder capital of the nation. But why is everyone killing each other? And what can be done to fix it? I met up with a local rapper, Noon Orleans, to find out. I mean, anywhere in New Orleans is the jungle. It happens anywhere in New Orleans. Kidnapping, car jacking, all of the above. If I were to leave my car parked out here with the keys in it, it wouldn't be out here for an hour. Really? I guarantee you that. And 10 minutes in, we stumbled upon a murder scene where someone was killed just last night. How long you been out here in New Orleans? Oh, man. Somebody just got killed around the corner. Oh, you said someone just got killed right around the corner. That's what you just said. Someone was literally murdered right here? Yeah, I don't know what specific spot, but when I came through, I saw all the police calls from like right there. Did you see a murder scene out here? I did see the police out here. I didn't see if anything happened. Bro. Okay. How is it living out here? It's not bad. Okay. When you go for a walk at night, you looking behind your shoulder or what? I don't usually walk at night though. Has New Orleans gotten more dangerous over the years? Yeah, very dangerous. It's wicked in this street, bro. What do you mean by that? Hey, you gotta keep a pole. You know it's the murder capital of America? You're right. Check the news. You can oh, see. I see the news. Yeah. We be strapped out here? Y'all not strapped? Did sure. you see anyone get killed out here? Yeah, I seen that growing up all my life. I probably seen my first shooting when I was maybe like five or six. Just walking up the street, walking around the corner to my mama house, seeing if she got out work. And I seen a dude, he just put out a gun and told him they like, where my $20 at? And he shot at him over $20. Scary out here. Scary out here? It's hard and scary. It's what do you mean by that? You never know when you're going to get mugged. You never know when you're going to get jagged. I mean, it's like we walking on eggshells. It's that freaking scary. You yeah. scared to come out your door. I mean, it's just scary. I'm going to do things. All right. The crazy part is a lot of these cycles stem from the 90s and shit, bro. A lot of these kids don't know why they fight. But back then, even if they was killers, they had morals, they had principles. You know what I'm saying? Nobody didn't kill children. They'll call and tell you, we about to come around there for you. Put the kids and the ladies inside. Put the women inside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We coming for you, me and you. We can meet in the middle of the street. Be lucky to graduate for real. A lot of people from when I was in middle school, they not here with me today. You feel me? That's what another thing I learned. A lot of the kids that be innocent, they, they could die too. Yeah. It could be anybody, for real. It, you don't got to just be in those streets, gang. Um, bro. The first time somebody pulled a gun on me, I was nine years old, bro. And it wasn't even a killer. It was the police. So it's like from those type of experience, you learn how to approach life from staring on a barrel of his gun. You feel what I'm saying? We just playing basketball. My brother-in-law, bro. Yeah. Long live Joshua Adams. He was killed by the police department and he wasn't doing nothing. My sister was giving birth to his son. You dig? Yeah. He never got to meet his son. He left the hospital to go get my sister slippers. You feel what I'm saying? While she was delivering their baby. Didn't make it back to the hospital to see his son get born. The police stole him. You feel me? They killed him. They left me for dead, but why the f would you doubt me? I come from public housing, paid mama bills as a child. Never knew shit about allowance. This ain't for fortune and fame. This from the torture and pain. Before this mic made me sane, I wore this all on my brain. Some of my bitches just changed. Now they gonna pack up your funeral. That's why I ride with the Glock. Young niggas dying from cops with all my faith in the Lord. Cause you could die with a cop. That was crazy. You just spoke like a whole social commentary in that rap. If it don't come from the heart, it ain't noon. Whoa. I then learned why New Orleans got into rapping in the first place and how crime and violence has impacted them. I learned how to write raps because my pops was incarcerated my entire life bro, up until I graduated high school. And I had to learn how to write letters to him. That's how we communicated. A year and a half ago, that started like a, a series of funerals for me. I went to over 10 funerals from some of the closest people that I love. We sweep shit under the rug, take it on our chin and go. That we numb the violence. You know, you got a lot like that fentanyl shit. I lost like three or four friends from fentanyl overdoses this year. Crime, violence, gangs, and drug addiction seem to be baked into the culture here. And so we headed to the infamous Chef Street, known for prostitution and showing the lengths people go to make money out of it. Apparently where a lot of prostitution goes down, women are selling their bodies on the streets. But a lot of them do have like pimps and shit. Yeah, dangerous out there. And it's protected. They, they shoot behind the holes. Actually? That's a fact, bro. Nine times out of ten, they do have somebody with them. They protected by somebody in New Orleans. Females not just gonna be on a nowhere by themselves. That chick right there. Found one. Uh -huh. What are you doing out here today? You working out here? I mean, I got niggas, yeah. What does that I mean? I wouldn't say I'm, the, I'm like, I wouldn't call me a hoe. See, you wouldn't either. No, I'm not calling you a hoe. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, I know I got hella niggas and stuff, but um, yeah, I just got niggas. I got a lot of niggas. What do you mean by that? No, that's like trying to ask me my body count. No, I'm not asking about it. These are my classmates. Like, okay. These are people I went to school with. So you've been 
you've been f***ing them for that long? Is that what's going on? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been f***ing since I've been like 15. Cause no, I'm really not a hoe. I'm really like a wife type, really like. Now I'm a wife, like I got, I got, you know, a hood marriage. I got one in jail and I got my older nigga always. He really my baby daddy. Well, any last words about New Orleans? I mean, the food always good, dick good always. Everything, I hear you the best for real. Is this street right now known for like prostitution? Certain sections of it. Yeah. They try to run them off and they come back. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans from your perspective? Uh, I don't know if I'd want to say. What do you mean? The, uh, the Yeah? Yeah. <laughs>he said N-word. Oh, oh like, shit. Okay. I'm glad I didn't come over there. Yeah, it might have been some trouble, right? Yeah, I'm glad I ain't come I was, over there. I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, damn. Yeah, but he that shit out on camera, yeah. yeah. He gonna get himself from the outside looking in, it was easy to judge these working girls. But New Orleans emphasized that people out here were doing anything to survive. It's, it's mandatory that you hustle in the city of New Orleans. Are you not gonna survive? There's no resources, there's nobody coming to save you. So, I'm 18 years old, I need a job. What am I doing? Are you robbing somebody? Okay, it's sad to see. Yeah, as kids decisions. making bad decisions, yeah. bro, I wouldn't consider none of them as being evil, but you know, the government, society, whoever, the, the, the judicial system, they'll paint you as that as a child. But for the majority, man, all these kids really needed somebody to talk to. If I pissed off the wrong person out here on the road, what are the chances they're strapped and they'd be willing to shoot me? It's over a 75% chance that they're strapped. I mean, I'm gonna shoot you out here. As we drove through New Orleans, I noticed a lot of these buildings looked damaged or destroyed. That's life in New Orleans right there. Apparently, this was the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina that hit New Orleans in 2005, destroying homes, businesses, the city, and countless lives. But I wondered how the trauma from Katrina impacted and developed the next generation of criminals who grew up in these shelters and experienced it all as kids. We lived in shelters and experienced homelessness at a different level than any other American. I was sleeping in abandoned houses myself. They ain't really had nowhere to sleep. It was getting where you fit in for hotel rooms. We got a lot of these rundown buildings on this side of the city. We're in the east right now. So they grew up thinking they was at war. When they woke up living in them shelters and shit like that, people got guns pointed at them. They just trying to go use the restroom. I'm talking about little girls have to take a shower in the same place as a grown man have to take a shower, not knowing if he a pedophile or his background or anything. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So growing up in them type of conditions will, will scar you mentally. It's more than PTSD. It's like it's everything. We had to learn how to live again. Your whole life just wiped away in a matter of a moment. It was one of the worst experiences ever. Yeah. You dig? Seeing dead people, not knowing where your family was at the time. Has New Orleans recovered from that since? No, we recovering, but we haven't fully recovered. Following Katrina, many people are trying to recover and rebuild their city through starting their own businesses and turning their culture and history into a positive opportunity. I met up with the owner of Chicken and Watermelon to understand how important entrepreneurship is for the future of New Orleans. Uh, you own a business out here? Yeah, Chicken and Watermelon. And where did the name come from? It's, it's kind of funny. I'm gonna say it like this, back in the day, they raised chickens, they sold watermelons. Yeah. They just put a bad connotation on it to make it seem like it's a bad thing, but this, you know, this is how you get wealthy. How important is entrepreneurship and business ownership for the youth out here? Man, if you really want to be successful in life, start your own business. The education system dumbed down, the charter schools, they dumbed down, they ain't trying to teach the kids nothing. And if you talk to the kids, they slow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to inspire the kids, man, it ain't just about school. You still take that, that hustle mentality and change into something else and learn as you go. There's all kinds of ways to hustle, man. You gotta find something to sell, not drugs. I love how he's turning a negative stereotype into a positive business opportunity. Yeah, you What's your name, man? I'm Josh. Josh, my name's Tyler. This is the Boy of a Shop. How long you had this place? Going on, what, four years now. How important is it having a hustle out here in New Orleans? Very important. Yeah. If you look at the city right now, only certain parts of the city is built back post-Katrina, right? You will be seeing that, okay, there's not really much for a lot of New Orleanians to do because the city is lacking resources. Look, look at the record labels. We haven't got no record labels in New Orleans. Think about it, kids just won't have fun. I think it starts with us teaching the kids and like fighting for the future of the kids.
It was obvious that the hope to break the cycle of violence was in the next generation of kids. But with their idols being drill rappers talking about gang violence and murdering each other, it was clear it impacted the culture and mindset of the youth from birth, leading to kids wanting to emulate their favorite rapper, pursuing the life of a gangster rapper, shooting up their ops, and getting shot themselves. We met up with an up-and-coming rapper who wanted to emphasize that the gang life is no joke. What's your name? Three. Are you gonna spit some bars for us? Yeah, I got you. I got okay. you. The stage is yours, man. Bo, my trap go crazy. Your shit moving, and nigga, you lazy. I run it up to my mama, I made it. Try to take something you bring on the pavement. Niggas be bitches, they don't want no smoke. Try to take something that glitter I told. Trying to control my ain't no remote. I was down on my dick, I was crying for hope. Bells and bells and bells and bells. I run it up trying to get to the riches. I'm in my bag and they deep in their feelings. I ain't trying to talk, let niggas just listen. Slide on these block, niggas better be cool. I just want f I ain't trying to be rude. Head shot, you know where I'm at, no leg shot. Aim for the neck and everything all the head. You boys can freestyle. This is all your life story coming into to bars out here? How many times you got hit, bro? Eight times. No twice, in my, bro. twice in both twice in both of my arm, twice in both of my leg, one in my chest, you hear me? You been shot eight times? Yeah. Holy sh thank yeah. God you're alive. Who, who shot you? I don't know. Is it that dangerous out here? Yeah. I didn't even give a f they just shooting sh up here. Yeah, just wrong place, wrong time, yeah. bro. How close to this was to your heart? Two, three inches, you hear me? I was blessed by two, three inches. Okay, you have a kid? I got three. You got three? Yeah. They inspire you to keep going and just keep yeah. fighting for this dream? Most definitely. I got a little girl on the way here, man. Do you think the music impacts the next generation of kids in a bad way at all? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. That, that ties into what I be telling my little young boys. Like, y'all don't got to do this because y'all see another nigga doing that, you hear me? Yeah. You hear me? See, they watch a music video. Everybody in the music video throwing Dracos and Glocks and switches in the camera and when they grow up, they gon' feel the need to like, when I make me a music video, finally make me a music video, you hear me? I gotta give me a Draco, I gotta give me a Glock with a switch and all that. No, you don't need that shit, bro. To all the young boys, y'all ain't gotta do that shit. Nine to five, just as good as hustling. Sliding on the clock, just as good as sliding on a block, brother. No cap. <laughs> Not everyone is as lucky as him, and a lot of people die due to gun violence. With murders happening every day, countless kids are left without strong parental figures, get raised by the streets, live a life of crime, have a few kids, get locked up, and the cycle of violence and crime continues. Yeah, you gotta break them, them curses, man. It be like generational curses that we still be carrying on, family fighting, and people not speaking to each other. The kids are the future. It starts with teaching them, taking them now and molding them and giving them opportunities that we never had because it's way easier than it was back then. We didn't have the resources, you know? So Noon took us to a local middle school that his buddy taught at. That's goal was to give these kids a safe place to learn and build skills for the future without having to turn to the streets to make money. If you fill these kids time with something positive then they don't have time to do anything negative the more knowledge these kids have the more power they have they don't realize how great they can truly be um, we have music art we have culinary if i know my kid is in my band room playing the horn i know they're not in somebody's car stealing their stuff you want to be producers So I get them to send it to me and I listen, and I'd be like, man, it's crazy how creative they is. Like, they mind. So I try to give them in that class the space to really just open up creatively and just yep. let they, you know, let everything flow. You feel like this is like a home away from home? Yeah, because it got me out a lot of stuff. The reason why this band is important because this gives the kids another opportunity to basically, like, get away from a lot of different things that they, you know, these kids go through a lot. Like, I had kids over the summer, lost parents, kids that go home probably didn't eat in the night. This band is like an outlet for them to, like, basically get away from all of that. And before I left, the proud band teacher wanted to show me the talent and dedication these kids had, but only after a little discipline. I'm gonna be real with y'all. As your band director, I'm getting a little aggravated. I'm gonna have to just start putting y'all out of the band. Say, bro, you come to school to learn. All this other side stuff, some of y'all just too many follow. If you want to follow something, why you don't follow the good things in life? Like seriously, y'all won't follow everything negative. Nothing positive, but everything negative. Because it's starting to y'all starting to put other kids in danger or stuff. You don't care about the next man. You're selfish. Get your mind right. Too many y'all in the hallway. For what? You come to school to learn, man. A dog, you have to start taking this education stuff serious. Open it up. Bang horns up. Despite the traumatic backgrounds and unstable homes a lot of these kids probably have, a good school system and a teacher that actually cares might be enough to break the cycle. That was awesome. You're
laying down the law in there too. It's very, very important that somebody stay on them because nobody else may not be on them. So we're making better people yeah. for the society, for the next generation. Subscribe to Tyler. Hell yeah. Blow this man up, run his numbers up on the streaming services. I want to see this man with 100K subscribers by the end of the day. Noon Orleans with a Z. Also, whoever has the most viewed TikTok or YouTube short using a clip from this video, I'll send you $500. Post however many times you want, but you must tag my TikTok slash YouTube at and put YouTube Tyler Oliveira in the title slash description. Last week's winner was this guy. Good luck, guys.